The film opens in a hospital where our lead character Harper is seen with her entire face bandaged. Her nurse lets her know that a state detective named, Slayton, has come to interrogate her. The detective starts asking questions after questions the minute he steps foot in Harper's room. However, before he can interrogate Harper, the detective frankly quotes his boss who doesn't believe in her story, claiming it to be nothing more than a hilly-billy fairytale. Therefore, the boss has sent Detective Slayton to find out for himself if Harper is not any other mountain tweaker who burnt in a meth lab. Besides that, she has ordered Slayton to lock Harper up when she gets discharged because she was caught stabbing the state trooper who found her. Through their Q&A session, it is revealed that Harper is a wildlife photographer who was captured and tortured by some hilly billies in the Wachitumi Valley. When she was found by a state trooper, she stabbed him, thinking he was one of the Ravenous hilly billies, given that the Raven claimed there were so many people like him in that valley. Slayton doesn't want to believe in Harper but at the same time, he's interested in getting to know more about the Raven, because he grew up hearing stories of him in similar stories. Therefore, setting aside his duties, he has personally come to Harper to find out if the myths are true or just fairy tales. While getting horrid flashbacks of what she had been through in the past, she reveals that the Ravena told her there are a lot more people like him in the valley. Detective Slayton reads her report, according to which, she was found covered in slimy gauze and was totally whacked out when the trooper found her attacking him. When Slayton asks about his missing boyfriend Billy, she reveals that they slaughtered him. However, Slayton has a hard time believing in Harper's words since Billy's body has not been found yet. When Slayton accuses her of being a crazy person who's making everything up, Harper cusses at him and stops giving any justifications to further defend herself. Slayton then speaks of her outstanding bio data, according to which, Harper has twice photographed the animals that were declared extinct. According to the information Slayton provided, he asks Harper if she went into the Wachitumi Valley to photograph a red snake. She explains that she wasn't meant to go to that valley. During their conversation, the scene cuts to Harper's first day in the forests of Wachitumi Valley. She hunts a fish for her meal, sets up a bonfire, and sleeps the night near the river. The next morning, she puts her headphones on and goes for a run. She then takes a canoe and rows it down the river, where she comes across a small island from where she hears loud and chaotic chattering, along with sounds of laughter. She docks her boat near a small island and walks her way up to see what is happening. Once she makes her way up, she hides behind a tree and witnesses the raven and his men ripping apart a man with whips. They have hanged the man to a tree and unleashed their vicious dogs on the ground. Since Harper isn't desensitized to such a she throws up and decides to run away. However, something goes through her head, and she decides to stay and take some photographs of the crime scene with her professional camera. Despite being fearful of being caught, she successfully takes some pictures and runs back to her canoe. After this, she goes back to the spot where she had parked her truck. She starts the engine and speeds away. As soon as she gets back on the highway, she's chased by a monster truck for a while. She thinks she's being chased by those men whom she had just photographed, but thankfully, her doubts are proven wrong when the truck crosses her and speeds away. After driving her way back for a while, Harper stops at a police station to report her crime, but she finds no one there. She uses the restroom to wash her face and makes her way out. As she's leaving, she hears someone in the office, so she goes back to report her crime. She finds an officer who is taking care of a shirtless odd kid, whom he tells not to worry about. Ignoring the kid, Harper tries to file a report but her grounds are still shaken after witnessing the crime scene, so she has trouble speaking up. She takes long pauses to describe to the officer what she has seen. Though she speaks up about having photographed the crime scene, the officer tells her to grab her camera so that he can see the photos and file her report. As she goes out, she sees the odd boy standing in front of her car. She quickly takes out her camera and her phone which has a voicemail from Billy. Since she misses him so much, she sits down for a minute to listen to his voicemail. Before Harper can finish listening to the voicemail, a vehicle tows her truck and takes her straight to the Ravena's land. Her truck is parked in the barn where Ravena's goons are seen with their rifles. The Ravener reveals that the odd kid is his informant who has informed him about Harper and the secret photos she's taken of them. At first, she dreads the men and offers them her camera so that they can wipe out the pictorial proof, but the Ravener reveals he wants nothing to do with the camera, but is interested in Harper herself. Harper doesn't want to get out of her truck, but the Ravener challenges her to combat if she wants her way out of there. Catching everyone off guard, Harper comes out of the truck with a gun in her hand. She immediately shoots one of Ravena's men. After this, the Ravena spins his whip and ties it around Harper's wrists. From there, he drags Harper deep into the barn where he confesses that her wildness is nothing more than a turn-on for him. Harper tries to fight off the Raven, but he slaps her and easily overpowers her. His men also circle them from all directions. Left with no other option but to talk, Harper confesses that she saw what they did to the innocent man. Ravena justifies his actions by adding that the man they beat up was no ordinary man, but a threat to their valley. He was a timber and mineral scout who had come to Wachitumi in search of oil and mineral sample. He had successfully gathered some samples that he was certainly going to sell to big oil companies for a big fortune. Ravena, justifying his cruelty and monstrosity, claims that he saved his valley from intruders because if they were to let the man flee, there were chances of the feds discovering their place. If the feds are to discover this place, they are going to sell the valley's mineral and timber rights to the highest bidder, which is a big threat to their valley. 
when Harper disagrees with his methods of preserving nature. The Ravena becomes angry and gets his men to tie her up on a table, and they all take turns while taking advantage of her body. The next morning, Harper gains consciousness and finds herself tied upside down, attached to the barn roof. Despite her hands being tied up, Harper struggles to take her pocket knife out of her shorts, but they fall down on the floor. After struggling for a while, she notices a glass lamp on a beam that's parallel to the one she's tied up to. She swings her body back and forth and gradually reaches the glass lamp. She takes off the glass and breaks it. She then takes a sharp glass piece to cut the rope that's tied around her wrists. Once her wrists are free, she climbs the rope she's tied to and sets herself free by getting the rope out of the hook. Then, Harper picks up her pocket knife and makes her way out barefoot. Suddenly, she hears a man's grunts coming from somewhere inside the barn, so she goes back in. As she follows the man's grunts, the sound of the bees buzzing gets louder. Ultimately, she comes across a half-deceased man's body inside a plastic bag. After seeing the man in a horrible condition, she screams at the top of her lungs and runs away. When the Ravena shows up with his psychics, he finds Harper gone. He sends his men on dirt bikes to find Harper and get her back, believing she couldn't have gone any farther. Meanwhile, Harper keeps running until she ends up in the woods. She finds a river stream where she cleans herself and moves on. Then, she finds an abandoned cabin, where she puts on someone's hiking boots and she steals a ball of thread before leaving. After this, she climbs a tall tree and examines a trail of smoke. As the night falls, she reaches the smoky area and finds one of the hilly billies who's getting high on some hard-level drugs and cussing at Harper non-stop. Taking advantage of his situation, Harper manages to get closer to his horse and steals a pack of explosives from his back. Then, she climbs up an elevated area and slowly lowers the pack of explosives, using the thread she stole from the cabin. She lowers the explosives into the bonfire, and as soon as they hit the fire, a huge explosion occurs which injures the hilly billy. Harper then goes near him and steals his bag of clothes as well. The hilly billy wakes up in a miserable state and asks her to help him. Harper asks him to tell her a way out, but he laughs at her and warns her that she will never be able to make it out of there. Since Harper is relying on her survival instinct, she puts on a pair of gloves that are stolen from Hilly Billy's bag and smothers his face with the gloves until he stops breathing. The next morning, she's seen running back and forth in the woods. At one point, she stumbles upon a copper string that someone had tied up between two trees. She takes out the string and ties it between two trees on a higher level. She waits until she hears a dirt bike approaching her and purposefully runs in front of the biker, luring him into her trap. She immediately gets down when she reaches the string, and the biker's head gets chopped off. After this, Harper takes his gun and helmet and walks away to make her next move since the third and last hilly billy is still searching for her. After tirelessly walking for hours, Harper comes across a river stream that's wide but not deep enough. She ties one end of the thread to the previous biker's helmet and takes the other end of the thread in her hand. She also throws the stolen backpack near the stream. When the third hilly billy shows up there, he finds his buddy's helmet. He immediately goes to pick it up, only to find out it's attached to a string that's going under the river stream. When he pulls it, Harper comes out of the stream with a gun and shoots him. She sits down for a while and hears the Ravena's voice coming from a comm that's attached to the dirt bike. After receiving no response from his men, the clever Ravener realizes that that Harper must have taken down his men. He speaks to her and reveals that Harper's wallet was left at his place, so he found out her ID and looked her up on the internet. He also compliments the remarkable work she's done in the past. He openly tells Harper of all possible ways to get out of this valley, but each direction takes months to get out on feet. However, going down the river is the shortest way out. Without feeling challenged, Harper makes her way to the river. She finds a woodshed near the river from where she takes out some giant drums and some wood planks. She ties down the planks above the drums and uses them to float in the river. Moving forward, she arrives at a land where she finds a giant house surrounded by bushes. She knocks on the door, but no one shows up. When she finds the doors open, she lets herself in and meets the man of the house, an old man named Malincra. Harper asks the man to let her use his phone, but he explains that he hasn't had a phone in his possession for over 15 years. The old man offers her some whiskey and sits down with her by the fireplace, where she sees his medical supplies and a syringe ready to be injected since he's a heart patient. Then, he shows her the compiled book about how he and his team contributed to taming the valley and cultivating civilization. Soon, Harper starts noticing the red flags in the old man upon seeing the violent pictures of people being tortured and executed in the book. She also listens to the old man defending and justifying executions, saying they measure a country's civility whereas the torture is a barometer that measures a nation's creativity. Soon, the old man goes to the kitchen to get another shot of whiskey. That's when Harper sees his old picture, where he's standing beside the Ravena. She knows something's fishy here, so she immediately takes out from Hilly Billy's stolen bag and mixes them inside the old man's syringe. When the old man comes out of the kitchen with his drinks, his alarm clock starts ringing. He quickly picks up his syringe and injects himself in the arm with it. He calls Harper to come turn off the alarm. When she gets up from the couch, he notices the pack of and realizes he's been drugged. He cusses at her while not being able to stand up. After this, Harper goes into his kitchen and steals some food supplies. 
On her way out, the old man opens up about knowing she's the girl who took pictures of the raven and his people while they were executing an intruder. He points out that the wooden cross that the man was hanging onto was designed by him. Harper gets disgusted after hearing him and leaves. As she goes out, she tries to start the old man's car but it's rusty. Then, she goes into the garage and finds a truck that luckily works. Before speeding away, she steals a rifle and fills it with its cartridges. On her way out, she realizes the old man must be going through immense pain after a drug-inducing heart attack, so she goes back to the old man's house and shoots him with the rifle, and is suffering. At the same time, the car radio turns on by itself and the weather reporter predicts a strong storm. He instructs the people of Wachitumi Valley to hide inside the sturdy structures of their houses, stay away from windows, and avoid car rides. Harper keeps moving forward, keeping the raven as directions to get out of the valley in her mind. On her way, she sees multiple abandoned vehicles near the crops and in the woods. However, poor Harper's luck runs out when her truck stops in the middle of the fields just when the thunder starts rumbling. Starved and bruised, the nature photographer now takes out her backpack and the rifle and starts walking into the woods. She screams in hopelessness when it starts raining. She takes shelter in an abandoned car where she lights up a fire and eats canned food that she stole from the old man's house. She passes the night in the car and starts walking her way out of the woods in the morning. She finally comes across the gas station that the Ravena had told her about. She then goes inside but doesn't find anyone at the duty. Soon, an officer shows up, the one who she went to file a report in the first place. She points her rifle at him, telling him to give up his revolver. The officer claims that his boyfriend Bill has been looking for her everywhere. He uses Bill's name to emotionally incline her. After hearing about Bill, Harper drops her rifle and runs to hug the officer. She cries out loud, hoping she's saved, but the cop's facial expressions indicate that he's up to no good. He assures Harper that he will take her back to the station where she can file her report and go back home with her boyfriend Bill. He sits her down in his police car where he asks her where she has been. The tragedies have made Harper speechless, so she just decides to take out her camera and show the officer the photos that she took at the crime scene. While she takes a look at the photos in her camera, she zooms in on a guy and realizes that he's the exact officer whom she's currently in the car with. Sensing her impending doom, she starts yelling and banging on the glass that separates the back seat from the driver's seat in a police car. Here, we realize how well integrated the people of Wachitumi Valley are, given that they all know about each other and work for each other. Now, the officer takes Harper straight to the Ravena's barn, where he's anticipating her outside. He opens the car door for Harper as an ironic gesture showing courtesy. Then, he ties her up back inside the barn and starts talking to her about the old methods of torture, one that two folks used to sabotage an entire kingdom. Of all the tortures, he tells the story of the worst one, which requires a baby calf. He whispers in Harper's ears how a cow is born with four stomachs and a digestive system so strong and fast that it digests tons of foods that it eats in a day. Then, he shows up with a baby calf and ties its rope around Harper, who is secretly busy trying to cut the rope with her pocket knife. The Ravena explains that the old folks used to barge into a royal gathering with a cow. They used to cut open the cow and sew the king's entire body inside the cow's stomach with his head out. Despite the cow's fast metabolism, it took three days for the king to decompose and get digested by the cow's stomach. After this, he acts upon the folk tale as he's telling it to Harper. He slaughters the calf he had just brought. He creates a small cavity right near its anus and starts emptying its guts out so that he can fit Harper in it. Seeing the calf get gutted in front of her, Harper is more than grossed out by this bizarre torture method, yet she manages to challenge the raven. She starts laughing out loud, making him insecure. When he asks what the matter is, she recalls how she took each and every one of his men down. She points out that he and his people really thought they were something. Yet they were all slaughtered by her and as for the Ravena, she taunts him saying that he stayed in his hiding place like a coward and sent his cop fellow to get her. Playing politics, she challenges Ravena's masculinity by threatening him to untie her, so that she can show him how she will slaughter him. To further provoke the misogynist, she adds that she will not only claw his face off, but she will torture him and take his life. She talks about dragging his body across to the other side of the barn, and watch the pigs eat him up. When the Ravena comes closer to her, she spits on his face, further fueling his rage. The man takes out his knife and unties Harper. She immediately opens an attack on the Ravena with her pocket knife but he easily overpowers her. In a rage, he uses his strength instead of his mind and starts choking Harper, not realizing her hands are loose. Harper gets her hands on his revolver and points it at him while laughing maniacally. While keeping the revolver pointed at the Ravena, she tries to flee but the Ravena plays the final cards. He lowers down the tied-up Bill who was stuck to the ceilings this entire time. Harper momentarily loses focus and gets down on her knees to untie and save her lover. Unfortunately, the Ravena gets hold of his gun once again and laughs out loud in Harper's face. The scene cuts back to the present, where the nurse has interrupted Harper's story, saying she has come to change her face bandit. She also states that her medical reports have also come up. Slayton doesn't believe a single word of what Harper said up until now. The nurse tells him to leave, but Harper insists he stays, so she can finish her story. She adopts a very aggressive and cold tone while retelling the last part of her story. She reveals that the Ravena fed her boyfriend to the pigs. He then started smacking the living hell out of her. When hitting her didn't feel enough, he stabbed her with his knife. He only tortured her with the knife and kept her alive so he could sew her inside the calf. 
By the time he butchered the cow, he hung her upside down to the ceiling and terrorized her. As Harper tries to tell Slayton about how she ended up getting almost digested inside the calf, Slayton cuts her off, diagnosing her as mentally ill and accusing her of being a victim of a dangerous opioid epidemic. Opioids are medicinal that trick the nervous system into numbing the pain of a person who's enduring a lot of pain. They are also sleep-inducing which is why Slayton thinks Harper is some junkie who takes opioids and is lying about the raven. As the nurse slowly takes off the old bandages, the top of Harper's scorched head and forehead shows up which is horrifying to look at since she was partially digested inside the cow. Slayton also becomes grossed out and makes his exit. Not listening to the ending part, Slayton heads out of Harper's room. He is stopped by the doctor, who recalls the police report which said that Harper was found covered in a Vaseline-like substance and the burnt marks were caused during an explosion. Slayton cuts him off, saying he knows what the report says so he doesn't have to tell him twice. The doctor replies to Slayton, saying the police reports have a false narrative because according to Harper's medical report, it is proved that she wasn't covered in Vaseline, and it wasn't an explosion or the heat that caused third-degree burns on her body. Slayton is flabbergasted so he walks closer to the doctor and asks what kind of burns Harper has. The doctor reveals that the lab report states that she was embalmed in the digestive enzymes of an ox, solidifying that Harper wasn't lying about her encounter with the hilly billies. Now, Harper's last scenes are shown where she's sewn inside the cow, leaving only a small hole to peek out from. After sewing Harper inside the calf, the raven locks up the place and leaves. This is where the film ends.